Welcome to the venue. This space used to be a combination of a fellowship hall, youth room, storage for tables, and just other junk. And it just wasn't meeting our current needs. So in the last six months, we set out to transform it to our new student ministry worship area. And today, I'm gonna to show you just how we did that. So let's go. Let's talk about some of the general space design and layout changes we've made. Some of the things that we really disliked about the old layout was the giant accordion door that separated the two spaces, the hodgepodge design of flooring and paint, the expansive angled ceiling, and the lack of storage. Not to mention the AV struggles we had in the space. And we knew we wanted the space to be a place that our students could really call theirs, but it also needs to be a space that is multifunctional. It's our largest room other than our worship center. So funeral dinners, baby showers, other ministries are still gonna use this space. And this helped us settle on a pretty basic design scheme. Lots of grays and neutrals for the carpets and walls that'll hopefully extend the lifespan of the design relevancy. So we tore out the giant wall, we blacked out the ceiling, we built a backstage storage area, we rerouted and installed new HVAC, and we built a sound booth and stage. After a couple months of contractors working, we had the bones done and our AV integrator could get to work. So let's dive into the fun stuff. I'll walk you through audio, video, and lighting upgrades to this space. It was really important to me that the equipment we utilized in this space prepared our volunteers for the equipment we use in our worship center. So for front of house, we chose an X32 with a digital snake. It's a little bit older tech, but since we use the Midas M32 at front of house in our worship center, this will help with some cross training and some prep of our future sound engineers. And we could have gone with the M32 compact, but probably for the money, I like the idea that in the event of our Midas failing in the worship center, we'd still have enough analog inputs to swap it out with this board and be good to go pretty quickly. Our choice for speakers for this space was an adventure. <laughs> with all the supply chain issues, we took a while to get this set up. Originally, we were going with a small turbo sound line array, but that was not gonna get here in time. So our integrator ended up finding an amazing deal uh, on a JBL Vertec line array system, and we jumped on it. Little did we know that once we got the system flown, we would quickly realize the sightline issues that we had created with this monster system. The space had become a sound system with a room instead of a room with a sound system. So we switched gears and we settled on the Electro Voice ETX 15P speakers for our mains. We have a total of four of them to get even coverage for subs. Our integrator Sound and Church custom made a sub basket for our JBL SRX 728 Dual 18, so they could be flown up high, saving us stage space while providing even coverage. And we also purchased a lot of sound panels from Sound and Church to help with the acoustic and the reflections in here. The space, it sounds great now. Our youth band are using the P16 in-ear units along with a couple just QSC powered speakers for wedges for fill-in. Well, if you guys are finding this video helpful, why not take half a second, hit that like button. If you're interested in worship and tech world, uh, go ahead and subscribe for more content like this. Hit that like button. It plays a little fancy animation for you, and I really appreciate it. Let's dive into the video system now. Our video system in this space is pretty simple. We are running Pro 7 on an M1 Mac Mini. It's feeding two external displays, one being our projector and the other being our 70 inch TV for the stage display. So to do that, we're using a Blackmagic mini monitor adapter for the stage display as the M1, it does not support that many external displays natively. And our main output is hitting the ATEM mini before going to the projector. And it was important for the projector feed to be using a hardware output of the Mac because there are gonna be a ton of times where non-pro presenter content will need to be displayed, whether that's Kahoot quizzes, Right Now Media, maybe even PowerPoint. The A10 Mini gives an easy option to connect things like a Nintendo Switch for playing Smash Bros on the big screen, or a feed from our worship center even to use the space as an overflow room. For projection, we are using an Optima 6000 lumen projector 
and that's a laser projector and it's shooting onto this custom cut PVC screen. We opted for this style of screen just so that it's a little more visually interesting when nothing is actually being projected on it. It's cool, but I'm not sure if we'll keep it long term, but I think that wraps up the video stuff. Let's dive into lighting. Lighting in this space on a budget has been interesting and we've made some mistakes along the way. One thing we knew we wanted was separate control of house lights via DMX. And previously we had six metal halide work lights that are similar to like old gymnasium lights. We upgraded in the ballast and those to LED. And then we opted to add a bunch of these LED UFO lights as our nicer house lights. They look great. They're insanely bright and they make the space look really clean. The problem we ran into is that while we do have DMX dimming control of these, uh, these style of zero to 10 volt lights do not allow for dimming really low. So they pop on and off with the relay that we had installed. This is just a limitation of the LED drivers and the lights, but for a hundred bucks a light, uh, they're the most economical solution to the problem. And they're rugged, they're not gonna break when balls hit them from nine square and they really should last forever. And looking back, I wish we had, would have looked into like spatial pendants from Springtree, um, but I've heard mixed reviews about them. I don't know. Uh, for stage lighting though, we're using four Chave Slimpar VW PARs with barn doors. Those are for our small stage. I mean, it's perfect. And we have a bunch of LED PARs and bars to add some visual interest to the background and audience wash, but there's no haze or movers in here for now. Well, there you go. This is a space that we're gonna be using for years to come and even possibly as a temporary worship center as we remodel our main worship center in the future. Hooray for three services, yay. <laughs> it's not the perfect space and there are already things we would adjust, but all in all, we're super happy to have this new space for our students to call home. Investing in future generations is just a core value we have and this is just the beginning. Remember guys, we can do a lot of great things. Let's do it all for God's glory.